A Grace-like woman was killed with her own butcher knife because she awoke and saw a neighbor in her apartment. Catherine Kretschmer, 23, was asleep when a man who lived across the hall from her in downtown Grays Lake entered her apartment looking for beer. The man, John Wayne Chorba, formerly of Wildwood, was held in the Lake County Jail charged with murder and burglary. Chorba and Kretschmer lived in the second floor apartments at 10 Whitney Street, above a hardware store. They had both only lived in the building about a week and apparently did not know each other. The victim's mother, Laura Kretschmer, said she, her husband, and her son had been to the apartment earlier. They asked Kathy if she had asked a neighbor for help in connecting the TV. Kathy said no, that she hadn't met anyone yet. Kretschmer, who was born in Chicago, was one of four children. She graduated from Salem Central High School in Kenosha County, Wisconsin. As I recall, you know, those that was uh, upstairs at the the hardware store, and I think it was Laporta's. They ran a pretty nice place, and sometimes you had uh, apartments up above. They'd rent to some people, and I think what happened with this 27 apparently he was in his 20s. I don't know what his age was exactly, and it was I think John Wayne Chorba, and I think he was a problem person. And he had some issues, uh, probably mental illness, perhaps drug use, and he just. I think it was a crime of opportunity, uh, knowing that there's a single woman there. It was just absolutely frightening. It was horrific. Well, I tried to tell the students that uh, you know, crime happens a lot, and uh, it's just it's as shocking as it was. You can't alarm it by saying it's a crime wave. But I was sure glad when they locked him up. He eventually would die in custody, in prison. I it was absolutely horrible. In, in, in Gray's Lake, that, that could even happen. Are you kidding? And you know, since this considered itself a small town, uh, even though it was growing, that was hard to, hard to take. I think so. I mean, uh, I, I, I mean, we would probably be telling our kids to be cautious, watch out. At, it was an isolated incident, according to Grace Lake Police. Yeah, not in school, not really, but they, they expressed concerns that could happen. I said, well, I'm trying to reassure them. I said, this is a good town. You know, I mean, it is. Like in Chicago, I mean, there's, some, <laughs> there's good things about it. It's not all bad, but I mean, for any place, you have crime. Uh, crime of opportunity, crime because uh, people want to take something away that they're not entitled to. Revenge, hatred, jealousy, there's a lot of motives for crime. Uh, and it can happen anywhere where there's a people, a lot, or a few. It just seems like in a smaller town it's, uh, it's more, uh, more uh, uh, exacerbated, made worse uh, by the fact that it's you know, probably looking around and you don't, you don't want that walk around for fear. I don't recall them saying much except how sad and angry they may have been and how could this happen. That's exactly the same question I had. How, how could this happen? Mm -hmm. A decent community, uh, an indecent thing, and an inhumane thing, and barbaric. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, but you reassure the kids that it, it, it's it's an isolated incident. Number one. Now, if there was, you know, if it kept happening, then then there'd be a problem. But I think the police, uh, you know, at that time, did the best investigative work they could. And since this was, you know, they had narrowed their suspects down, I think. They got the guy. 